Hey, what's up, everybody? So if you have been on the wait list for the W2 Capitalist Mastermind, wait no more. We have, I'm about to introduce you to four guys who are going to help me expand the mastermind. We're essentially going to double, more than double in size by the end of this year. I know it's October. We just passed over into Q4, but we are doubling. And it's, it's amazing to see these guys grow over the past couple of years. But not only just these guys, but people who joined the mastermind a couple of months ago when we had space. It is just amazing to see what happens when you get around like-minded people who want to push you and hold you accountable. Uh, it's just incredible. So, I'm already recording. So in three, two, one. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Jay Helms. I am the founder of this podcast and movement known as the W2 Capitalist. Today, as I always say, I have a very special guest, but today I have four special guests, right? And if you're listening to this, chances are you are a 25 to 50 year old, you have a successful job, you have a couple of kids or planning to have one or two. We're just talking to Adam there, who's got a one year old and had some sleep problems last night because they're uh, cutting teeth. But you're sitting down, you're talking things out with your spouse, you realize that you both want to be further along financially so that you can either A, grow a bigger nest egg, uh, B, you have the option to leave your W-2, or C, plan for some generational wealth building. So through many avenues, most recently we've seen this with, with COVID, but through many avenues, you've realized the most risky thing you can do for the financial well-being of your family is have a single source of income in the form of a job. Now for job, to me, that stands for just over broke, right? But you want to tap into the 90, what 90% of millionaires have already done and add real estate investing to your portfolio. When most people encounter this idea of real estate investing, the first time, right? When they first encounter this, they go through this self doubt, maybe a little bit of imposter syndrome, right? That they aren't good enough. They aren't rich enough. They didn't come from the right bloodlines and or they don't have the skill sets to be able to own income producing real estate. So what I want to do today is not only introduce you to four gentlemen uh, who I've grown to have much respect for, for what they're doing, but also just introduce you to these, what I'm going to call average Joes, right? We're all average Joes, all five of us. Uh, but these guys are like you and me, and they are successful real estate investors building their portfolios while they work a full-time job and are present for their family, right? Not only, man, you guys amongst the five of us, we have a small army. I just now realized that, but uh, not only are you going to get to meet them, hear from them and or see them, but guys, my hope is that you'll be intrigued enough to get involved with the W2 Capitalist Mastermind, which is what we're really here to talk about today. In addition to introducing you to these guys, and you can find out more about that going to w2capitalist.com slash mastermind, or just going to w 2 Capitalist dot com and hitting the mastermind button. So along with my, myself, these guys host individual mastermind calls throughout the month to share strategies, hold their members accountable and challenge each other to accomplish more. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you for, for, and you're, you guys listening to this or watching this, you're going to understand real quick. We have no agenda whatsoever. So we're just going to kind of bounce around. So the four people I'm going to introduce you to are Gway Smith, Adam Zock, Jamie O'Brien, and Mr. Darren Hay. Guys, good morning, because it is early on a Sunday morning, and welcome to the show. Good morning, man. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Excited to be here. Good morning, Jay. Thank you are more excited than I expected you to. You were texting me, and you were saying, hey, if I come hang over, hung over, is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, what a lot of people don't realize is, you know, a lot of times you get like that burst of hungover energy in the morning. You, you know? do. Like, I don't You're know if you've ever had dog. that. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, this may fade quickly, but I'm here, man, and I'm excited to be here. <laughs> you probably never stopped. Probably never stopped. That that usually works the best, right? That uh, it usually works the best. I, uh, Jamie, how old are you now? 30, mid 30s? 30, 35, man, 35. And, Enjoy uh, while you can, because the next five years, that resistance to alcohol and be, ability to be able to operate. Yeah. It's, it's going to go away. It's already hit me. <laughs> it, I mean, I didn't go, I didn't do too much last night, but that's the problem with getting older. You don't have to have too many. Friends. Exactly. That's you the next day. But I did hang out with a bunch of Auburn fans and watch them get stomped by Jordan. Man, did they get stomped. Um, they it was embarrassing. Stomped. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, so Gwaith, I want to talk to you. You are in uh, New York, right? You are our commercial family guy. So one of the things I didn't mention is Gwaith is our commercial family, commercial multifamily guy. Adam is our single family buy and hold guy. We're going to get each one of their of experiences. Uh, Darren is our mobile home park uh, investor slash extraordinaire. And then Jamie is our flipping and wholesaling uh, expert. So Gwaith, I want to start with you. You're in New York. There's a rap song, I think, that starts with that. Uh, there, you're in New York. You have 1,700 plus units in your portfolio. There's a whole mix of how those are set up. And you've been, there is an ongoing debate between you and Jamie, who the original W2 Capitalist Mastermind member is. Both of you guys have been here since. Uh, There's no first, debate. It first started. I know who the winner is, but I'm ne I don't know that I'm ever going to tell you guys because I enjoy seeing you guys go back and forth. <laughs> but tell us a little bit about where you are in your investing career and what what you because one of the things and, and I know I mentioned this, but each of these guys are going to be now hosting their own mastermind calls, right? Specific to their niche, which I'm excited about because as I did the numbers and I've been kind of sending some. I know you guys, when you see these emails come across, you're like, man, did he even think about this when he sent it? Because it's so sporadic at times. And I am just so excited because now with you guys coming on and hosting your own calls, the mastermind is going to double, right? So we have 40 members, close to 40 members in there now. I think it's the actual number is like 33 or 35. I kind of round it up to make myself, make myself feel better. But with y'all coming on, we have the capacity to get to 80, which is, it's awesome. My goal by the end of the year is a hundred, right? So we're going to talk about that in the coming months and how we can expand on that. But I'm super excited about this because you guys are focused on the niche that you have the most experience in and Gway, starting with you, multifamily, multifamily is your jam, right? I mean, that's been where you've been. So tell us a little bit about, um, your experience in multifamily and what folks can come to understand or appreciate about the mastermind calls that you're going to lead. Absolutely, man. Um, yeah, so multifamily and, and my background, I, you know, I guess I started and my journey is, is maybe a little bit slower than, than some, maybe a little bit faster than others. Slower, 1,700 units. Well, I mean, that, that is broke. I mean, the way, the way that that occurs, I mean, it's a pretty easy roadmap, like in, in my eyes. So, I mean, I started just buying Love small, it. small multifamily duplex, fourplex. Um, and then, you know, that led to partnering up on something a little bit bigger with one other guy. It was a 13 unit. Um, at that time I knew I wanted to go bigger. So I started looking into passively investing into other people's deals and and that's where a big chunk of some of those units came from because I was a passive investor in, in a 350 unit property and a passive investor in a 436 unit property. And then um, those passive investments actually led me to an opportunity to co-sponsor a few deals. So, you know, now I'm, I'm kind of transitioning from passive investor to a co-sponsor. And as a co-sponsor, I was raising money and I was involved in, in properties of 350 units 212 units, 136 units. So that, you know, that, that number in the portfolio just keeps growing, but like the actual progression of me from buying a duplex in 2016 <laughs> to a fourplex in 2017, to doing two passive investments in 18 to co-sponsoring <laughs> in 19. And then <clears throat> next thing you know, I'm joint venturing on some bigger properties and I'm actually a, a sponsor on a 196 unit right now that there's a lot of involvement on. So the, the path and the trajectory, in my mind makes sense because I started where basically anybody can start. Yeah. Yeah. And, and nothing I did along the way other than acting and, and taking action and kind of committing to it, you know, it's nothing that nobody else could, you know, should, should not be able to do. Yeah. I, I didn't know you had all that experience. Cause we, you know, we talk uh, almost weekly in the mastermind and I didn't know, like I hear about your 13 unit and the deals you've been sponsoring and stuff. And when you sent over your bio for the mastermind page, I was like, Holy shit, he has been freaking busy. Like I didn't know, cause you don't talk much about the passive deals because passive deals are, if they're truly passive, like they're supposed to be, there's not a whole lot to talk about, but I, I appreciate that. And, and I'm, Thank you for sharing that portion of it. I want to go back to something you said, though. 
In 2016, you bought your first duplex. In 2017, you said you bought your first fourplex. Was it really a year between th those two no, purchases? It wasn't because the, the, the duplex was end of the year. So I want to say we, we purchased that in maybe October of 16. Yeah. And then the fourplex, um, it was through the same broker and there was a good, you know, there was a good, um, you know, we, we had a good little process there and she yeah. liked us and she found it. And it was only like maybe three to four months later. I mean, we closed okay. the fourplex in January. So even though it's 16 and 17, it was really only a three month. Gotcha. Yeah. We got to talk about this on the Wednesday call. Um, uh, Warren, who's a member of the Wednesday crew, he just closed on his first fourplex, first investment property ever. And he was like, he's got this fire. He's addicted. If you can remember back to your first deal, you're like, all right, this is working out better than I thought it would. I want another one. Right. And he's, he's about a month and a half into his first purchase. And he was like, I mean, I need to find another one. How do I do that? You know, let's, let's get into this. And, and so we started talking to him about um, all the things. The, there was four or five people on that call and we all went around the room talking about, all right, from the time you bought your first deal to the time you bought your second deal, how long was it? And I think this, the earliest time span was like a year. Everybody else was further on that. So it's interesting to hear three months uh, was that, so Warren, if you're listening, there's hope for you, buddy. You can do it. <laughs> so, there, there was close to a year gap then after the fourplex to the 13 unit. Uh, yeah. And to be honest, you know, like you, you just said, like you get the first one and you're, you're itching for the second. I mean, we had some things go wrong on those first two. So after the second one, I, you know, I started questioning myself and mm. you know, like, is this yeah. really work? You know, is this, are we really going to start making money off of this? And, you know, is this worth it? But yeah, we, we kept the pedal to the metal and, you know, kept on chugging along and, and kind of got confident enough to go for something bigger. And, and then it really, I mean, everybody says it and it's true. It's a long game. You know, you're not going to do is. this in one deal. You're not, you're not going to do this in one year. Um, you yeah. Just keep chugging along. Very smart to take a tactical pause and then refocus and go after it. Adam, were you about to say something? Yeah, I was going to say about the same thing when we formed our first LLC, trying to go after, you know, the fix and flips, which Jamie's going to walk circles around me because I could tell you everything not to do. He can tell you everything <laughs> to do, but boy, doing that and then not just being like, you know what, you know, this isn't for me. Real estate's too risky to then being like, all right, well, what can I learn from that? And then, you know, now just yeah. continuing to push forward. So same, you know, it wasn't exactly the first deal because we did a house hack and some other things beforehand, but like the true, like, Hey, we're only buying this for investments and then mm -hmm. just for it to go so far South, this is before bigger pockets or anything, or, you know, this group. Yeah. So there's a lot to learn just by doing it and failing. And yeah, it's a yeah. throwaway property, but we got some really good lessons learned. Yeah. How many of you have lost money on an investment property before? I was just going to go down that road. Adam, you're just a lot smarter than I am. I'm just stubborn <laughs> as an ox. And like, I just remember in college, they said, if you, uh, the law of physics is like, says that eventually if you throw a tennis ball at a brick wall enough times, it'll go through. So, I mean, it's like, <laughs> What's the number of that? I, I feel I like have I no just idea, heard, but you know, I just, you know, do, are you, do you know, you guys know the commercial, how many licks the little owl is, how many yeah. licks does it take to get the center of a Tootsie Pop? I feel like I just heard that about him talk about the brick wall and the tennis That's ball. it. That's <laughs> it. So, um, no, I mean, I've learned a lot of lessons the hard way, but, uh, it, you know, that's kind of part of the game. And that's the reason yeah. we're here, I think, today is to help a lot of people not learn the hard way like we yeah. did. But yeah. I was going to bring up one point, Gwaith, real quick. And I think if I remember correctly, we joined, what, the end of 2018, we said, to this mastermind. And I want it. I want to say you, maybe you didn't talk about the passive investments a whole lot, but I want to say you, you were talking about having like 20 something units at that point in time. Is that, have you grown exponentially in the last couple of years being a part yeah, of this group? Absolutely. Cause yeah, the, the, the 20 was probably the, you know, the four, the two and the 13. Hmm. It was right around that mark. And I don't know if you remember this, Jamie, but like who, who was the original here? Do you remember, I told, I told uh, Jay this the other day, how he was having technical difficulties on that first call. So we actually got on the call together. We had our own call, yep. <laughs> yeah. we, we just got on the phone and, and did our own thing. That's right. And we said, is this yeah. guy going to get his shit together or what? 
<laughs> yeah, you know, and Zoom's throwing us and uh, I, I would take full ownership of that very first call. That was me. I didn't know what I was doing. And then now here recently, Zoom's making us more secure. Yeah, I'm using air quotes there, right? As far as um, I don't believe it's more secure, but we had, now I had to have a PASCO to get into the meetings and whatnot. Let me circle back around this. When I asked the question, who here has lost money on an investment? If you're listening to this, all five of us raised our hands. Uh, we're not going to get into the details of that because we'll, we'll talk about what we can do to help you. And the fact that we've all lost money, we have some experience to say, this is why you don't do this. This is why you do do this instead. Right. So, um, Adam, we'll come back to you, man. So let's talk about your focus, single family buy and hold. Why, why are you focused on single family, right? And I know I didn't ask Gwaith that question because it just popped in my mind. Again, we're kind of shooting at the hip here. But you, you've you been a member of the Mastermind for a year, looking at October 2019, which is October 20. We're recording this. You've been here for a year. Why single family? Why single family buy and hold? I think I was playing my area. You know, up here okay. in North Dakota in the Midwest where we invest, single family homes just seem to be easier to get into. And because I could self-manage them, I knew a little bit more. And I was, you know, I was like, oh, you could do this on Zillow, Craigslist. And when you were trying to do that with apartments, I didn't quite know how to compete in that space. So I think it was just knowing your strengths a little bit where I was doing a house hack and I could list things for rent and oh. I kind of could feel the market out as I was analyzing it. And multifamily was just not that it was, wouldn't have been a great strategy. I think it's just what knowledge, experience, and connections do you have and then pick an avenue of real estate. Because you know, I think what you'll learn on this call is there's no great one answer. Whatever works, you know, what works for someone somewhere, you know, two people can even be in the same state and do different strategies or same city and it, you know, it works out just yep. fine. So I think it's what, what do you enjoy doing? What are you maybe naturally good at? And then, yeah, just what do you want to progress with? Yeah. And to that point too, and, and this is why I love real estate investing because there are so many different ways that you can make money at it. Right. I mean, there, you can, there's four different niches here. I've done a lot of different stuff. I've never flipped a property, but because of things that are happening in our local market here, where let's say we invest, we have one property out of our 320 some you know, we're down to one here in Pensacola because we sold everything, kind of like Gwaith, we had sold some stuff off, invested passively in some other deals. But now, because of the way the market is, I'm like, man, I, I want to I try to flip. So actively getting on some um, wholesalers list and looking at some deals. And that's one good thing about real estate investing is at some point in time, Adam, if you wanted to say, Hey, I'm going to cash in some of these single families that I have and go buy some multifamilies. You could do that. Same with Gwaith. If he says, Hey, you know what? It's time for a good full cycle on these multifamilies. I've got a boatload of cash now. I'm going to go buy some single families. I mean, you, it can it just so, so much mix, or I don't want to leave Darren out of the conversation, mobile home parks, right? <laughs> See you laughing. Uh, so Adam, when you, so you're an engineer by trade, right? So, Talk to us a little bit about what your calls are going to consist of and how they're going to be run. Cause these guys, and one of the things we're talking about is um, they have the ability to operate agnostically every how they, I'm going to, I don't want to try to say, yeah, I'm not even going to try to say that word. It's going to make you feel like I'm talking about what Nemo lives in, but it's not, it's, and we'll just say you guys get to operate, you get to host your own calls the way you want to. Right. Autonomously. Thank you, Darren. Yes. <laughs> I was I was just listening around for that ride. That was a fun ride. And and then the <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. Yeah. Uh, um sure. Yeah, I can I can yeah. I can take a take a stab at that. So I mean awesome. just a, a little bit of you know background on me just to put the context of why I would, you know, host that. So, you know, happily married, three year old, one year old, full time civil engineer started the real estate thing, you know, kind of accidentally eight years ago with a house hack and a room <laughs> rental, figured out that this real estate thing is awesome. And then over the last three years, you know, I've scaled from that one deal to, you know, I think we've done, you know, 35 transactions. So we've done like the single family commercial loans, contract for deeds, private money, lease options, you know, off market, doing some all cash, conventional financing, had some partnerships that went great, 
that you know I'm still in had some partnerships that went bad. So it's like, okay, so I've done you know a half a dozen or a dozen you know of these different things. And so getting individuals that are like, you know what, I I want to list my existing home as a rental as like an easy transition out, which is like what I did. So it's like, okay, if you want to go from zero to one, you know that might be a good first yeah. move for those trying to you know jump on because I think that's the easiest thing if you're if you're already in a home list that sucker for rent and if you can get the price that you want like perfect now you've just got your first real estate investment property so if you're trying to go from zero to one and i get that everyone's family situation is a little bit different where you might not want to do that but that's you know probably some things that we'll talk about lastly i would say you know for those looking to scale i think what happens to a lot of people is they'll buy a single family they need 20 percent down they'll put down 50 grand they go yes i did it right and then whether it's good, bad, you know, whatever, but then they're like, well, how do I, how in the world could you go from one to 30? Yeah. You know, like that, that doesn't, doesn't seem like it makes sense. And so as everyone will probably attest on this call is you just kind of hit that hockey stick growth that if you do enough of these and you start learning from other smart people and get into different masterminds, you kind of just learn how, how the game works. And that, that would be what I would want to, you know, tease out and bring to the, to the call that we, that I lead. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And you're, and you're, you know, it's funny. Um, I hear a lot of folks talking about, um, well, first of all, the first deal that you do doesn't matter what niche you're, you're focused on or going to be focused on. The first deal that you do is always the hardest. It does not matter. Right. And it's funny to me when I hear people talk about, I don't want to invest in single family because you can't grow as fast. And these folks have no units in their portfolio. They have no experience. I'm like, Okay, somebody told you that and you bought into the idea, which is good, but what's the easiest thing for you to go out and do right now? And I think you just said it, right? You could you could list your own property that you're living in for rent. I tried, before we moved into here, I tried to get my wife to, um, hey, let's rent so that we can use the equity that we're going to put in this house to go buy some more units in very much like Adam. I, actually, all of us have kids, but she was like, you know what? not going to do that. Let's find somewhat of a fixer upper and do a live and flip. And that's what we're doing now. But we're actually having conversations about essentially listing it, which is my problem with live and flips. I don't know. I don't know if you guys have ever done them, but I'm, I get uh, emotionally attached to them. And I'm like, dude, we, we've got the golf course behind this, which means our backyard just extends for 18 holes, whatever. And it, we, I don't know. Anyway different conversation for a different time. Um, Jamie, you were about to say something. No, I was just going to ask if you had a box of tissues. You're getting sentimental. I know, I know. I, mean, you know? <laughs> I get it. I've never done the live and flip, but I get, I get connected to them. You know, sometimes you just have a house you love. Like you put in all that work, you've made it, you've made it your own in a way, yeah, you yeah. know, and, no, we have. and it's hard to let it go. Well, we that's have. an interesting interesting dynamic too between all of us on the call and our spouses you know if all of our spouses were on a call boy what would what would that you know what would they say because i know the risk tolerance between two spouses you know although you can have the same end goal yeah. risk tolerance is a whole different thing and so you know i think that's something too that that is that is important that we you know routinely talk about i would invite that call i would host that call to make it happen but i know my wife's not going to do it uh, she just does not like the idea of the attention. I don't know why, but uh, it, you, to your point, that's, that's a great thought process, you know, having a different risk tolerance. So what are the, so Adam, you and I are kind of on opposite ends of the spectrum. You're motivating, motivating me to get out of my, um, I feel like this is a Darren Hay phrase, my pansy ass uh, setting of being so conservative, getting out of that comfort zone and getting more to, but where does your wife sit on the, cause having your spouse on board with real estate investing is, is ultimately huge for the success of it. Right. Otherwise you guys are going to fight about money. You're going to fight about all sorts of things, but where does, where does your wife? Cause I know you're in one of the quotes that you've said in the mastermind that just keeps ringing in my ears is, is either I'm going to be a billionaire or I'm going to go bankrupt four times over. And I, I'm just, it just motivates the hell out of me. So thank you for sharing that number one, but where does your, where does your wife sit on the uh, risk tolerance? Extremely scared of that second part. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know, what's and- funny though, is I, ever since you made that comment, I talk about 
going bankrupt to other people, right? And everybody comes back and you and I've had this conversation before. Everybody comes back and says, well, we are taught, we are, it's drilled in us that going bankrupt is such a bad thing, right? But really it's just a repositioning of debt, right? If banks and everybody would work with you to, to do this, then you wouldn't have to file bankruptcy, right? But they're not willing to because it, that is the business decision that they're making. It's a business decision for you too, right? Yeah, and I, I would agree that, you know, in your upbringing, what you've been taught is risky or not risky. And, yeah. you know, we, we've had some pretty heated discussions where on the first property that we did, we were pulling up carpet because the tenants flooded the basement. And it's a conversation <laughs> of this is why we're never doing another real estate investment property, right? Because it's, it's Sunday, it's me and my wife doing stuff. And this was before, you know, we had property managers and kids oh, yeah. and we were doing all this stuff to, you know, fast forward now where with, you know, because I'm a, you know, a heavy student was surrounding myself studying a lot. I think once, you know, she had seen some progress, but she's also stopped me from doing a lot of stupid stuff. Right. Yeah. So, she, you know, she always says she's the, you know, anchor to my kite where I would just float <laughs> around anywhere and I would do shiny ball syndrome, but she yeah. has like, okay, remember this is home base and don't go too far away from that. So I think that's a, a good kind of complimentary skill set to now where we buy homes and you know, she doesn't, she doesn't quite know <laughs> that, they, that they're like what the address is or what things are going because we're, you know, kind of yeah. going pretty fast that she doesn't yeah. care. She's just like, all right, tr I trust you. Just, you know, tell me what I need to know. But now it's like, you know, it, it's kind of just <laughs> run with it. Yeah. So, I want to jump in real quick. <clears throat> I had a very similar experience. Like my wife is extremely conservative with investing and like, I, I think in her mind, she would put cash in, in the mattress, you know, and, and like, be, be okay with it but yeah. to zach's point you know at zach to adam's point right there um yeah my wife's now is just like yeah run with it you know like she doesn't have to know everything she's actually handling some of the private lending stuff and and outside people who are way more you know way more aggressive than me and would take risks that that i wouldn't look at me and say like man like you have a really high risk tolerance and, and i'm like i don't like i you know, I guess like what you don't realize is that like, yeah, you think I'm giving somebody money and I'm getting a return on that money, but you know, like I'm covered here, you know, like I, I got, I'm on the insurance. If, if the, the private loan, you know, like burns down, I'm first in lean position. I'm like, there's, there's actually strategies to, to mitigate that risk. But uh, you know, I, I think majority of people don't realize that and they just look at like what you do and you're like, oh, that's risky. And, yeah. and if my wife can now be a hundred percent on board with that, then, uh, you know, <laughs> it gives me something. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, and I, I encourage people to talk to your spouse, talk to your spouse often when it comes to real estate investing, because I'm guilty of not doing that. We, uh, my wife and I, we were do, redoing our, uh, life insurance going down the whole, whole, whole life insurance, uh, path. And, and, uh, so we were on the call with, with the guy we're setting it up with more, more to come on that later, but, um, he's asking us certain questions and I was like, Oh, so now, uh, Cassie, my wife was like, now it's probably a good time for me to tell you that I'm loaning this money to this local business out of our, um, uh, self-directed RA because of, it just came up at that point in time. Right. I mean, we have three kids all under six. And, uh, so us having adult conversations sometimes struggle, but that came out and, and she wasn't upset. She was just like, Oh, okay. I was like, no, it's good. It's like, here's, and all the things that you just mentioned, Gwaith, it was like, look, I, it's a lean on the business. Um, I've known the guy for a couple of years blah, blah, blah. He's doing really good. We've used him for his stuff. It's a tree removal service, which we just had a huge hurricane come through. And so, uh, anyway, it's highly important to have those conversations with your spouse, have them often, but it's okay for y'all to be on opposite ends of the spectrum. Right. And because I think there's some balance, but it takes some, um, concessions for both parties to be able to do this. So good stuff. Good stuff. Um, Jamie, I want to come to you next. Let's talk about flipping and wholesaling and why you think you were the first member of the W2 Capitalist Mastermind. <laughs> why I think I was the first member. Um, I'm going to be really disappointed if I, if I wasn't. Uh, and the only reason I think is because I, you know, I just, 
honestly, I saw your post and I um, was at an early stage in my investing career and I knew I wanted to, to kind of take things to the next level. And I just took action. I think I just signed yeah. up the first time I saw the post. I just was like, yep, I'm going to sign up. We'll see, we'll see where this goes, see what this is about. And um, maybe I maybe I missed it by a few seconds, but you know, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna claim first spot for for the there entirety. Is, there is a timestamp somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love but, that, uh, it, and that's one of the things. If you're gonna get started, you got to take action, and it absolutely. doesn't have to be that you go out and buy a property blindfully, right? It is joining a group like ours, and why I am partial to the W2 Capitalist Mastermind. The important thing, if you're listening to this or watching this get around people who do this every week, right? And, and you get to have conversations with them, your mind gets opened up and you're going to start to see your circle of friends change because I would say, and I said this in a post that, I, you know, um, when I was advertising for the, this expansion is that I feel like you guys, even though I've only met like two out of the current 35, I think in person, is that I feel like you guys are some of my closest friends because of what we talk about, how often we talk and all this. And um, my son the other day, he goes, you know, we don't, we don't have any friends. I was like, well, A, it's COVID, you know, uh, B, you don't see all the people that I talk to virtually, right? We're, it's all going to change hopefully here pretty soon, but, um, but no, uh, it's so taking action, right? It's huge, huge part of that. So Jamie, back to you, sir, flipping, wholesaling, you're located in Birmingham, Alabama. Tell us about you. Tell us about what, what is going to happen on your mastermind calls. Yeah, I'm going to break that down, I guess, into two parts. Just, I mean, a little bit about me and my background. Um, I am here in Birmingham, Alabama. I've got a beautiful wife, uh, two wonderful little girls, twin girls. And, and pretty much my story of getting into real estate was uh, about four years ago, we found out we were pregnant. And then we found out we were pregnant with twins and uh, no family close. And, yep, it was like game on. Um, Go ahead, realized, you know anything about twins? Yeah, we got a Darren, lot of twins. Darren, you know anything about group, twins? <laughs> Darren's like, I, no, it's triplets. Yeah. You have triplets, don't you, Darren? He's on mute. I'm filling this dead airspace until he figures out the mute button. Hey, there you go. There you go. <clears throat> Yeah, three uh, three seven year olds. Yes, three wow. seven year olds. No, wow. Anyway, all right, Jamie, back to you. you no, you're good. And so twins. we found out we were having twins, and and long story short, my wife was either going to not go back to work or have to find a different job because of the industry. We're both in sales. I'm medical device, and she was in publishing sales. And every daycare we talked to was either well, they're all outrageously expensive, but yeah. Um, yeah. they wanted you to stay be close, right? And so she, we were just like, well, let's just let's let you stay at home, raise the children and see how it goes from here. And uh, there was a different level of motivation that I've ever felt to like mm. fill that void. And, and like, I was like, my W2 is not going to get me where I want to go and provide what I want to provide for my family on its own. So how yeah. do we take this to the next step? And so started, you know, as Adam said, just becoming a student, learning everything I can and, uh, and dove into it. Now, how I got into the flip wholesale. And I'm even going to throw burrs in this because I really think a burrs just a flip that you keep, um, you know, as far as like yeah. the rehab process and everything else. So uh, honestly, it was it was sexy. Um, I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to prove that I could do it because all those HGTV shows were out there. And I was looking at Blair one day and I was like, I, well, we could do this. She's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I started down that path. But what I learned, you know, is is the flip wholesale and burr game. I always thought this is going to sound so cliche, but it's so true. I always thought you had to have a lot of money to invest in real estate. Um, and in fact, you don't, yeah. you don't have to be uber wealthy to begin your process of investing in real estate. Um, and, you know, flips have provided a great active uh, source of income to replace what we lost with Blair's income. And then we, you know, we take that capital and we, we look for more passive investments. with it. Nice. Nice. That's good. And, and kind of um, along those lines, you know, I mentioned I'm, I've never flipped before. I've always had a full-time job. And if, if this is the first time you've found us or listened to W2 Capitalist, I was laid off May 1st due to COVID-19. And I vowed I'm never going to go back, right? And one of the things as I'm kind of ramping up the W2 Capitalist, just brand and mastermind, all that good stuff, I, I am realizing that I actually have time on my hands, the ability to go do some flips. So that's another thing that... Um, as, as of course, I'm going to document the hell out of it as I do it. So you guys, if you're listening and you want to 
know what that's about. Hopefully pretty soon we can start talking about that. We're pretty, pretty close on a deal now that uh, when I was talking to wholesaler uh, Friday, Sunday morning, so it was Friday when I was talking to him, I was like, oh shit, this could actually happen like uh, in like 10 to 14 days. So anyway, we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah. Anyway. Well, so, jump on my call, man. And you'll learn a lot. We'll yeah, get there. So, we'll get you there. So you focus, uh, flipping and wholesaling, it, you do where you live, right? So right. it's within your geographical drive. How far out do you go? Um, we'll go, I'd say 30 minutes to an hour, but that could okay. be 20 minutes, you know, 20 miles, maybe max. So the greater Birmingham area is yeah. pretty much where we focus. We like certain parts of town. Um, but probably, I mean, we'll travel 30, 45 minutes if we had to pretty, pretty regularly on some properties. So I one of the I, things I like you told to me pretty local. Yeah. And one of the things that I've learned from you is that, and it was just, I've heard this quite often, but it was the way you phrased it. It was like, huh light bulb but you you were like there are part there are neighborhoods that you flip in and then there are neighborhoods that you don't flip in in this entire time i'm like oh that would be a good flip oh that but i don't know what i'm doing right because the name the neighborhoods i was looking at was like you really now that you said that you kind of planted that seed in my brain i'm like you can't flip in that neighborhood you can't get enough out of it to to be able to do that so what you said that probably i don't know months ago and it's just like Adam's comment, it just resonated with me. Uh, so thank you for sharing that. It uh, helps yeah. me understand uh, so, so much that I went to our local RIA and uh, posted something in their group. Hey, what are some of the areas? What are some of the neighborhoods that you guys flip in? Because I, when I look at our uh, footprint here is that it's not, um, I've never looked at that right hey what neighborhoods do you flip in the also the other thing too that i've realized that living on the coast does for you is you have like half the radius of like somebody that's not on the coast right because i can't drive 30 minutes south because in two miles i'm in the water anyway so a little uh, bit smaller geographical footprint i guess yeah yeah i I don't like you're still gonna have pockets join us come join us up here we got plenty of room (laughs) You know, I, if I didn't hate, absolutely hate cold weather, that might be a discussion, right? But keeps out the riffraff. <laughs> I like it. I just like grow it. some hair and you'll, and you'll, uh, you'll get along just fine. Grow some just, hair. <laughs> just grow some hair, man. I don't know if you want to see me with hair. It's not a pretty sight. Not that this is really that great beat you to the punch uh but yeah it's uh it's different uh so darren i'll I'll come to you next since you're chiming in on growing growing some hair be a man come up to the cold cold weather country by the way you and adam and gwaith are all got your you know heavy heavy uh top layers on and jamie and i are sitting here in, in short sleeve shirts so um i don't know just interesting observation but darren You're based in Iowa. You have an army of kids. You're a mobile home park guy. Tell us more about you, man. Tell us more about the mobile home park industry and why somebody should be interested in joining the Darren Hay Mastermind Call where you guys talk about mobile home parks. Well, thank you. Um, as the uh, as the affirmative action hire, you know, I just want to say thank you for uh, <laughs> for letting me, for letting me in the group here. You know, I uh, <clears throat> I look at the the company here, uh, you know, of all the accomplishments, and I look like, wow, I, uh, he must have had a requirement for, uh, for you know for a crazy hillbilly, you know. And it it is a niche that, in, and here I am, right? No, so. it's a niche that I think needs to be served. And you and I have had uh, many conversations about mobile homes and mobile home parks. I still have, I have one mobile home in my portfolio today. I've had up to three at one point in time. And, um, but yeah, I, I'm actually trying to sell off the mobile home that we have, uh, run into some title issues. We can talk about that later. Um, but yeah, I, I am not against mobile homes, uh, or mobile home parks as long as somebody else is operating them. Right. I don't want to be yeah. that guy. I don't like, I would much rather be in, uh, want to be in Gway shoes uh, being the sponsor and the co-sponsor and the JV partner for a syndication than a mobile home park. And I think it comes because of my experience in both, which has been limited. Maybe I don't have a good testing or test pool to pull from yet. Uh, so I, I do think the mobile home park 
niche is one that's underserved from an education standpoint. Cause as I was reaching out and trying to see what is going on uh, in the real estate investing world to expand these mastermind uh, calls, there's not a whole lot about specifically mobile home parks. There's one group that I saw that I was like, okay, there, there might be something here, but why do you like them so much? Why do you like mobile home parks so much? Well, you know, from a passive income standpoint, um, and also from a, from a management standpoint, um, I don't get the uh, multifamily uh, space because, you know, on, on multifamily, you own this, you own this, this multimillion dollar asset and you're responsible for this multimillion dollar asset and pure ownership of this asset creates liability in and of itself. Well, when you own a mobile home park, you own dirt. And if your dirt goes bad, you get new dirt. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, that's what you own. You own dirt. And so I, I and you just, you, you charge people rent to park their car on your dirt. I mean, this concept is as brutally simple as it gets. I mean, it, it, it really is. Um, you know, it's funny. Really, you, me you, you mentioned that it, it jars a memory in my brain, the first time I went to start talking to bankers about multifamily and being a lender for multifamily, the very first banker I went to, you know what he said to me? He goes, have you ever looked at mobile home parks? He goes, and I'm not talking about the ones where you own the mobile homes. He goes, I'm talking about the ones where you just own the dirt and they just pay rent on the dirt. Yeah. I'm like, I didn't even know that was a thing. Tell me yeah. more. He goes, that's where you need to go. I was like, ah, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't I don't get the multifamily thing, but you know, hey, teach their own, right? Um, That's it. That's so it. there's so many different ways to make money. I mean, we're only right. talking about four different ways to do it here, right? Or four different right. calls, but there's flipping, wholesaling, burrs, single family buy and hold, multifamily commercial buy and hold, uh, mobile homes. We're, we don't even touch the surface about being a private money lender or any of that other stuff that, that we're not going to get into it because we're already over. We're almost an hour into this. And I said 30 minutes. So you guys, thanks for hanging out a little bit longer here early on a Sunday morning, but Darren, sorry, get back to you, sir. You own the dirt. What, what we, uh, what I've done is, um, uh, early last year, I went and bought, uh, two mobile home parks, um, total of, uh, 43 spaces by the time we get done building them all out. I didn't know at the time that they were, they were full down to bones remodels. Um, uh, one of those uh, pro tips, don't go look at property in the middle of February when it's under two feet of snow. Uh, <laughs> you know, you'd be surprised what snow will cover up. Um, and so, uh, you know, when I, after the snow melted, I went out there and I finally got my head around what a mess I had. Um, uh, we just started the process of cleaning it up. We started the process of, of renovation um, you know, the, the water system was bad. The sewer system was bad. The, uh, the electrical system is so out of code. Um, the gas system is, I mean, it's there, but, um, um, nobody really knows where things are at. It's just, it's a, it's a mess. And so I just started the process of evicting people and, and putting the trailers in dump trucks and hauling them off to the, to the landfill. And, uh, now we're coming up on the end of phase two, uh, where we've replaced almost all the utilities. Uh, we've got one more that we hope to get done. We hope to get the electric grid uh, redone this year uh, before the frost gets us. And um, that will be the end of uh, our phase two. Uh, we've got units that have gone in there now, and uh, we're just in the process of finishing up, you know, some some updating, uh, buying these units, and, uh, or I mean, uh, getting them re rent ready. And uh, that'll be about it. So what I hope to accomplish on my call is for somebody who is interested in this particular space, I think I've got the, I think I've got the handbook on what not to do down. Um, I think I can tell people with uh, a fair amount of authority. Here's how you do not go invest in mobile home parks. Um, Cause I've, I've done pretty much all of that. Everything yeah. I shouldn't have done. I, I, I did. As I Jamie say, mentioned, he's done some on his flips and, and wholesales. Adam's done some in his single family Gwace done some in his um, multifamily space. I've done some too in almost every aspect that I've invested in. So again, it, not only learning what not to do, but is learning what to do, right? And sometimes right. those are, are both the same. Right. Uh, I, I want to interrupt you real quick because sure. I want to say that everybody here has a W-2, but you actually don't, right? Right now you actually don't have a W-2, but you're a 
not only your general contractor, but you also, this is how dedicated you are to the mobile home park space because where you live, there's not a real good, um, I don't know how well you know those guys or, and, and or if they're going to listen here. So I don't want to use the wrong phrase here, but there is a, a lack of mobile home movers, right? So you're so right. dedicated to this space that you went out, you bought a truck, you, you started a mobile home um, movers business, right? Mm -hmm. And it's been great and it's been awesome that you've shared that stuff with us in the mastermind calls and kind of see how that progressed and help keep you accountable for certain things that you got to do and, and learn. So um, when it comes to construction or anything like that, we're use, you're usually our go-to expert. Oh, Hey man, what, you know, in the other night, um, a couple of members who are rehabbing a fourplex themselves, they started talking about, Hey, here's what I'm going to do. Here's our plans for this week. And, and you chimed in and you said, Hey, be sure to do A, B, and C because this is how you're going to know. I'm talking about um, Chris and Maricelo when they were going to put the texture on the walls. And you're like, here's what you need to do. Here's how you need to mix the stuff. Here's how you can test it, blah, 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 before you actually hit your sheetrock. So mm -hmm. that's the kind of expertise you have, right? General contractor, not only because a lot of folks, investors um, in the mobile home spark, mobile home park space. I don't know this as much. So I want to ask you this question, but a lot of mobile home park investors, do they actually get their hands dirty like you do? Or is that something that's just very unique to Darren Hay? I think a lot of people, um, I, I think they get their hands dirty to, 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 to some extent. Um, you know, I, I don't know that, uh, I don't know that that people come out and, uh, you know, are, are running the excavator, digging the trenches for putting right. new water lines in. Uh, that's, I spent more time in the excavator last summer than I ever cared to again in my life. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, I don't know that there's a lot of people that do that. Um, I don't know that there's people that, um, you know, go the, go the full extent of uh, setting up a trucking company, you know, buying a, yeah. buying a class seven tractor and, and um, going and hauling mobile homes. Um, so I don't know that, that they go that far. I, I do know that they will go out. Um, I've got a, a guy that I know and he has a park up in, in Flint, Michigan. He's there probably quarterly. He flies out from Seattle and he's there probably quarterly. And he does, he does a fair amount of stuff and he's a, he's a pretty good guy. So, uh, the other park owners that, that have, it, I think also depends on the size of the park as well. <clears throat> so yeah. if you have a bigger park, like one of the parks I'm doing a lot of service work in right now, uh, they're 900 and some odd units and they've got their own uh, maintenance crew. So they've got two foremen, they've got a couple of journeymen that work there. They've got probably a dozen apprentices and you know, that, that sort of thing. So there's, you know, they've got their own construction company that sets up builds and even helps maintain some of the, the units in the park just because they've got you know a built-in client base they own the they own 900 lots there that that does that gotcha they also have their own their own toter they do their own their own trucking they do all of that so it's self-contained me i'm on the lower end of the scale where uh it's hard to make the numbers work to go hire a contractor to come out and replace water lines that sort of thing yeah it took it took me forever last year to find somebody who would at least give me a bid uh, i'm in a part of the country where specialty subs specialty trades are are rare i think there's like literally four or five licensed plumbers in my part of the state and they all know each other and, and you're prices, in iowa right yes sir and the prices are just high as hell. They, they, they just are. Um, and uh, by the way, I knew you were in Iowa. I just wanted the listeners to know because you've been in the mastermind for, I mean, look, June of 2019. I bridged your service. You joined for a little bit, then you took a brief pause, and then you came back. And uh, but so I bridged your service to say June of 2019 because that's when you originally logged, uh, set up your account. Uh, oh, well, thank but, you. But I wanted to say it too, and, and I apologize for cutting you off here, is that, you know, we've all done this. What you're talking about is that you have to put some sweat equity at some point in time into your projects. Um, you just happen to be licensed and built a business off of that sweat equity so that, and I know you and I've had sidebar conversations outside the mastermind about what you want to do 
and your intention is to not only continue buying mobile home parts, but to continue to build those businesses out mm -hmm. so that you're not running that excavator mm -hmm. an absorbent amount of time. Right. 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 And that's, and that's part of why I went the, you know, I, I, I went the full Monty. Right. And I, and actually set up a, <laughs> I set up a, uh, a trucking company got my my uh, authority from the um uh, the fmcsa and i got my my state authority uh right now and i'm in the process i'm, I'm on the front end of of figuring out what other states i'm going to get authority in you know that sort of thing um and there's also another set of trucks from another guy who's retiring and we're <laughs> you know we're, we're kind of kicking around the idea of buying those i've already got a leads on a couple of a uh, couple of guys to drive them um nice you know, just, that's just news. Stuff. I didn't know that. That's that's exciting, man. Yeah, it it, it, it is. It is actually the uh, the the old uh, the old Amish guy that uh, I want to uh, yeah. potentially buy the uh, park from. Uh, his wife is starting to have some health problems, and you know, he right now he's an over the road truck driver, and, and I was actually at his house uh, uh, the other day, and I said, well, hey, you know, if you get tired of uh, you know worrying about your wife when you're you know you know, dragging, uh, dragging mattresses across the plains, the Dakotas. Um, you know, I've got a, I've got a truck driving gig for you. Um, you know, there's, I, I have the, I have the, the demand right now to haul a couple of houses a week. Um, mm -hmm. and I have the demand to, if I go out and actually start marketing this and start making contact the way I, I, uh, I want to, um, I think I can increase that demand and I could, I can pretty much have a, have a, uh, a couple of guys just hauling houses, you know, on a full-time basis. Nice. And you and really, and you really do this full-time when we're, when we're doing calls <laughs> and chains and you know, things are getting hooked up when Darren's on the call. Cause he's, he's literally hauling stuff on the call, <laughs> jumping stuff, moving a house. And I'm, I'm sitting here, you know, participating. He's, he's like multitasking and doing all of this stuff while he's doing it. So it's, yeah. he, he's, he, he, he truly is doing it all. Yeah. <laughs> The thing was, why I have, most of the time I don't have the video turned on, you know, because it's, um, and I'm usually on mute because, you know, it's just, it's, it's a, it's a mess. It's noisy. You know, my, my house is noisy, you know, but I've got, I've got four little boys. I've got three, three, seven year olds and an eight year old. And uh, I have to go to work and turn on the compressor and run the sauce to get some peace and quiet. You know, it's just, that's just, it, it's just, it's just, that's just the way it is, you know, um, <clears throat> But, Mike, you're uh, about to say something. Yeah, no, I was going to say that I, I think Darren's a great example of of what being full time is because I, I think I've come to realize that you know investing in real estate, whatever niche you're in, it leads to other businesses, and yeah. those other businesses are those other streams that are really going to provide you what you need to be full time. And you know, Darren came across a problem. You know, he couldn't. You know, he couldn't move mobile homes. So what does he do? He starts a trucking company. Yeah. You know, I, I talked to somebody that they couldn't get bids on insurance. So what they do, they, they started their own insurance agency for, for <laughs> getting insurance on their properties. And now his wife runs it 10 hours a week for 75 K a year. Wow. Different, wow. Everybody talks about vertical integration, but I, I feel like it's diagonal integration and, and what we do, it, it's going to lead to these other businesses. That's going to lead to, yeah. you know, streams flowing into a river, if you will. I love for it. sure. Yeah. Thank you, Gwaith. Um, <clears throat> yeah, for me, it was just, it was as simple as solving a problem, just like your, like your buddy couldn't get insurance. Um, you know, I had, I had an empty park that needed, uh, needed homes moved into it. And there's so few people in this part of Iowa that uh, actually move mobile homes. Um, I mean, I can count them on, you know, one hand. And um, everybody was either out three or four months or they wanted 10 to $15,000. I legitimately got a, a quote uh, from a guy who wanted $15,000 to move a house uh, about 70 miles. Wow. And I said, is that, I, I, asked, I asked him, I said, good grief. Is that the price with me buying you the truck to do it? Or is that without <laughs> me buying you the truck to do it? You know, and it was just, it was, and he was like, no, nah, man, that's just what it costs. And, you know, then I came across this old semi truck for sale for like seven grand. And I was like, screw you, man. I'm buying the truck and I'm doing it. <laughs> no. I think I, 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 I think that's awesome. I think Gway's hit the nail on the head with that, right? And as if that guy wouldn't have charged, let me ask you this: if that guy wouldn't have have quoted you uh, that amount of money, would you have been here at this point in time, having your own trucking business and going about it? Do you think you would have come to this point, or if it oh, was God, a no. 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 No, 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 not at all? Because I was expecting him to charge me, 
you know, and I was prepared to pay six, seven, eight thousand dollars. I mean, cause that's, yeah. that's about what the going rate is. Right. Yeah. Um, being blunt, I mean, that's what I now charge. Um, yeah. you know, so it's, it's one of those things that I, that's what I was, my expectation was. And he came in at 15. I was like, <laughs> and, and I questioned him. I was like, no, I, man, it's just the going rate. And I was like, it, it, it's not, I look, it's involved. Yes. I've now done it a number of times. Uh, so it's a true <laughs> statement. It's involved. Um, but $15,000, I mean, you know, you're like, what, three, four, 500 bucks a mile. I mean, that's good gravy. Um, so. That's some good know, margins if he can get it. But yeah, shit, if you can get a, it. That's a lot. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've paid um, to move one mobile home in my investing career. The one that we still own. And uh, break down, tear down, uh, connect everything back up. It was like 7,100 bucks. Mm -hmm. And it went maybe 30 miles. Yeah. And that's, and that's actually pretty common in, in my space. Uh, most houses, uh, when you move, when you move homes, um, the average is probably 30 to 40 miles. So it'll, it'll move. Um, they don't move very far. So when I, when I was dragging houses a hundred miles, I, you know, I was two, three times the normal limit. And that's what, uh, you know, that in and of itself caused problems. But um, yeah, at any rate, yeah, and I, I think the, the other thing, you, you know, kind of to waste point, which, you know, I, I think I'm just, I'm one of them people, I've been around long enough, uh, I've been a general contractor uh, most of my life, and I've, I've built almost anything, and so the prospect of hopping in the excavator and digging up a mobile home park to put new water lines in just, just didn't scare me. Um, it was just something that, you know, you figure out you kind of figure out the material, you figure out how to do it and, and just go for it. And my, my issue was that I, sometimes I've had so much experience, I'll lose my fear and I'm a little, uh, <laughs> little, little dumber than I ought to be. That um, needs to go on a t-shirt. <laughs> you know? do, you think that, yeah. do you think that stops people from joining? Like I know a lot of us kind of jumped in because we you know wanted it, but if I had more knowledge, I wonder if it would have, get me into the paralysis by analysis like you know going from zero to one it's almost like you have to you know flip that mental switch where you're like come hell or high water i'm gonna do this thing and i'm gonna accept the consequences whereas it would be really easy for me to listen to darren like you know what that's fantastic but i can see this flaw i can see that flaw and then you kind of just you know almost self-sabotage your own mindset for jumping in to something Oh, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, I think had I known then what I know now, um, the answer would have been hell no. Uh, I wouldn't have bought these um, because, you know, it's just um, the amount of work that went into them. Um, will it pay off in the end? Yeah, of course it will. Uh, and we and it's 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 actually launched us in an entirely new and kind of unexpected direction. But uh, had I known then what I do now, there's there's no way in hell I would have bought these. Absolutely none. But, you know, you, we were talking about how supportive our wives are at times, um, you know, after the snow thawed, uh, I remember, uh, my, my beautiful bride showed up one day and I hadn't hauled all the trash out and all that other stuff. And, you know, she brings me, uh, she, I, I asked her for something and, uh, she brought it out to me and she kind of looked around and you could just see this, this look on her face. And I, <laughs> it was just, it was just the look. And, and I was like, and, and you could see she she was processing what <laughs> her husband had bought and you could just, yeah, just the, the, the mix of emotions and, and just <laughs> finally, you know, she just kind of, just kind of swallows. She just looks at me and kind of with her half smile, she says, well, baby, you, you have made better buys before. <laughs> <laughs> she could have went so many different directions with that. But that she, was, she that was actually somewhat positive, right? That was, yeah, uh, backhanded it, it, was, it, it was, and, and you know, she, like a, it was, it was a night or two later, you know, we were sitting there having dinner and, um, she says, so do you really think we're getting our money back out of that? And I'm just like, Oh man, you know, and it's just, <laughs> but to that, to that point, Darren, I guess I would, I would take a little bit of a different standpoint, you know, even with ours that we've screwed up on in the beginning, I still would have done them because there's no way I would be where I'm at today yeah. without them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I know you maybe half-heartedly say, you know, maybe, you know, it was a, it was a great learning experience, but I think that's what may put you where you are today. Cause if you had done those Lord knows, you know, you could have still been considering it or you'd be like, Oh, thank God I didn't do that. Right. Cause, cause look what a yeah. mess I would have been in and you mm -hmm. could have just been sitting on the sidelines, you know, for, 
for however long. And so I would, you know, I, I, while I appreciate that, I would just want to, you know, provide my complimentary side of it that for all the scripts that I made, I'm just, I'm still grateful that I made them all. Cause for sure there's what not to do again. And that can be a very powerful thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and to, to second what you, you know, what you, you said, um, it gave me a great understanding of this space. So now we're, we're working on the process of buying our third park and it is one more time. It's a, you know, down to the bones remodel where, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of self storage there. So the self storage is going to carry this thing for quite some time as we build out and develop a mobile home park. But, you know, there's this guy that wants to sell it and, you know, at one point he was going to build this big mobile home park and he was going to, you know, build, uh, uh, build out self storage and all this other stuff. This is going to be his retirement income. Well, you know, life happens and his wife, um, you know, she's now, um, I don't remember it's dementia or Alzheimer's, but she's, her, her health is deteriorating and he wants to get out of the truck and be able to spend more time at home. But now with wanting to be able to take care of his wife full time, he understands that he can't do it. Um, he can't go build and develop his park. And that's, you know, where I come in. Um, and there's also been other parks that I was interested in buying uh, that were, they were full remodels. They really were. And then last, last but not least, you know, it just comes down to, you know, you start developing relationships in this business and other people start feeding you stuff. And I mean, it's just, it's something I, I, I do say that. And, and yes, it's half hearted. Um, but I, I really honestly believe that had I known then what I know now, I wouldn't have made the decision because I would have been fearful of everything that I was getting myself into. Um, but you know, once I bought it, you know, here, here I am. And uh, I became very determined to get my money back out of it and actually turn a profit on it. So, and that led to, to waste point that led to all these other, all this other stuff where, you know, we started a mobile home services uh, business when that included trucking, installing and, and things like that. So it, uh, it worked out. Very cool. So Adam just put in the chat, how are we doing on time? And we are well over for what we did. There's so much good conversation going on here. So I want to be respectful of y'all's time. I also want to let you know, if you haven't heard, I've been sitting on mute for quite a bit. House is waking up. That's, uh, that's uh, number three. She's, she's also teething. She's, uh, and she's cutting those canines, which I don't know if you remember canines from your first Adam, but the canines are probably, that's when they're just, they just turn on you. I mean, their attitudes are just totally different. Yeah, I couldn't quite figure out if they were yelling, earn, invest, or repeat. I'm not quite <laughs> sure which one that was of the screen. So I, knew, I might have to turn up the volume a little bit. I think I can get sounds, it, though. Sounds like earn to me is kind of yeah. like, earn. <laughs> That was good. That was a good twist. I like it. I like it. Uh, well, guys, well, let's wrap things up here. So if you're listening, if you're watching in, and you want to tap into the minds of these guys, as well as 40 other right now, it's 40. My plan by the end of the year is to get to 100. And if you want to tap into it, check us out w2capitalist.com slash mastermind. Uh, there we're working on the process to get people into it. I'm not as uh, the email I sent you guys, I'm not as excited about how the flow goes. I don't think it's easy enough. Uh, very first thing that people are going to do, they're going to go to w2capsules.com and take the quiz, right? There's a quiz button, go take, it's going to take you about five minutes. It's going to let us know who you are, uh, who referred you. If it was one of these four, please put that down. If it was Gwaith, Jamie, Darren, or Adam, please put that down. Uh, but I want to know that, or if you just heard this podcast, you're like, heck yeah, I want to, I want to get involved with these guys. Just let me know. But I don't think that's going to stop out there. So we're going to wrap this up, uh, wrap this up guys. Thank you for being here this morning. I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation as always, when I'm talking to a group of you or individual individually, um, it, it, I don't know. I'm, I'm like, this is not Sunday. This is day to go get shit done. Like I'm ready to go. Actually, I probably when we leave here, I will go text the wholesaler and say, Hey man, where are we at? what are we doing? You know, cause I'm, I'm that motivated to go to get stuff done. So thank you guys for being here. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and, and we'll talk sometime this week. Hopefully I'll see you uh, sometime this week on a call. And if you're listening and watching this, if you want to know the backstory of Adam's hat, cause we got to talk about this at the beginning, I'm going to put that after here. Cause I think it's such an interesting story. I'll, I'm just going to tell you, don't challenge him to a bar drinking game. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. All right. 
Guys, have a great day, and I will talk to you sometime this week. See you, Jeff. See you later. All right, guys, so we just wrapped up with the four guys, right? And I'm coming up with a nickname. I want to come up with a nickname for them that is appealing or, or uh, makes sense, right? And I've referenced and kind of when I was talking to them about putting this together, I uh, sold them on the idea they're going to be mastermind VPs. Uh, I've also referenced them as the four horsemen. I don't know. I don't know if you have an idea for a nickname for this group of guys that are going to help lead these mastermind calls, let me know, drop in the comments below, whatnot. But here on YouTube, what I do typically when I we wrap up a video, I'll say, hey, I want to see you in this video right here next, and we'll put it over this little block of the earn invest repeat. But I don't want to see you in the next video, right? If you're interested at all in finding out what the mastermind is about, I want you to go to w2capitalist.com, click on the mastermind button, uh, or if you're sold on the idea of the mastermind button, or mastermind button, sold on the idea of the mastermind, the next step you need to take is to take the quiz, right? So w2capitalist.com slash quiz, or you can just hit, click on the quiz button that's there. Both of those links are going to be in the description below. And that's what I really want you to do next. If you are sold on being part of the mastermind, which is essentially just like-minded people from across the country that uh, work a full-time job, whether it be a W-2 or 1099, who have a family, who are, are planning to have a family, and are looking to grow their nest egg, uh, hopefully build up enough passive income so that they can exit the W-2, or they're past those two stages and they're into uh, building what's called generational wealth. So again, the two links, w2capitalist.com, we'll get you to both of them. And uh, once you get there, you can click on Mastermind or take the quiz things up to you and, and on the mastermind page it'll show you a little bit more about each one of these guys and click on each one of their little cards it'll show you just exactly how much it goes in a little bit more detail of who they are and what they've done so anyway that's what i to leave you with here today on youtube i hope to see you in our mastermind soon i won this hat playing bar olympics when i was in college and it just brings a smile to my face every time I wear it. <laughs> bar olympics that had I, I thought it was pretty awesome i need to know more about the backstory now though yeah tell we, us about bar olympics we used to in college religiously so it's like who is the best at just random games like bounce a quarter into a hat a ping pong suck a ball through a straw or hold a, like a ping pong ball in a straw it's like shoot a nerf gun it's shoot pool then darts me and my brothers like would sweep this bar Olympics <laughs> thing because we just love mini games and bar games. That. And so you don't have to drink, but boy, did we take advantage of that. So you would jump around to 12 bars. They would have different games and you could score zero through 10. And at the end you would win cash prizes. So we would routinely get all of our drinks paid for and not come out too far ahead, but you'd win at the end. And then of course it was just about, you know, winning a little bit. So as part of that, we got Hawaii hats for, I don't know, whatever reasons. And so now it's like my only hat because I don't wear hats very often. Yeah. <laughs> I, and this, the Bar Olympics happened in North Dakota, right? Sure did. Okay. All right. That's awesome. and, and, <laughs> I like the Hawaii hat. I think that's good stuff. <laughs> uh,